sa pagtanong ko sang maes mga 30 anyos nga tanong ko sang maes puro lang permi ulod subong lang kang way maulod ang maes ko talaga ti problema ngamin ti maes iti second crop aji corn borer no tumama ti corn borer wala adda ti padanom mo wala adda ti pagabunom wala adda ti makina nga batta Nung natalag nga tamaan ni ti corn borer, talaga makulapse na di mais. Imbis nga dumakal, bumaba, bumasit, takamin ka ng di mais. So nga, hingga na, hingga na mataya di nga mais, kang ka ng tigis. Kiti, nung madanon ti panagmumula ti mais, mais iti imulmula mi. Nga iti problema, iti imulmula mi nga mais, puro at igisan. Tapos, no, Dadu ma, dije nakapu iti panagbunga na tada dije panagigkes na dije maes. Since I was a small boy, nung malit pa ako, tatay ko nagtatanim na ng corn. Pag ito naman ang harvest ng farmer, talagang luging luge, dahil yung recovery niya, milling recovery, malit na, plus may damage pa ng corn borer. Diyan ako makikita natin yung damage ng corn borer ito, no? Sa spraying grabi kami talaga. Tinatamaan kami ng spray. Next to rice, corn is the second most important crop in the Philippines. About 12 million Filipinos prefer white corn as their main staple food, while yellow corn accounts for about 70% of livestock mixed feeds. Close to 600,000 farm households depend on corn as a major source of livelihood. In addition to transport services, traders, and farm input suppliers who directly benefit from corn. The Philippines, however, is still far from being self-sufficient in corn production. A major culprit is the Asian corn borer. The ACB or Asiatic corn borer scientifically known as the Austrinia fornacalis guinea, has been considered one of the most serious insect pests of corn in the Philippines. It is widely distributed across Southeast Asia and in the Philippines. You can observe about 30% damage throughout the cropping season. But under high infestation, it has been recorded that 80 to 100% crop loss is caused by this insect pest. If you look at this uh... Uh, stock. You will see the borer holes here and if you split the stock you will see the tunnels which was uh, the damage uh, done by the borer larvae. If you look at the uh, corn cups or corn ears you will see this damage. This is a clear manifestation of uh, early damage of uh, corn borer larvae infesting the early stage of uh, corn cups development. Aside from reducing corn grain quality, the injuries inflicted by the Asian corn borer provide a way for plant disease causing organisms to enter the corn plant and attack it further. When this happens, fungi that produce harmful toxins may find their way into the corn seeds fed to our livestock and poultry animals. Small as it is, the Asian corn borer ravages through corn, after corn, after corn, making up to 80% of a farmer's harvest go to waste. Farmers have used different methods to effectively control the corn borer problem, but with inherent limitations. Nag masakit din ako, isa ka bulan ka, sobra isa ka bulan ko sa ospital. Agyan ko sang una sa pag-spray ga brutod kian ko, alos hindi ko katulog, kapamuskon ko, kalibanga ko, hasta kalipong ko. Farmers need alternative technologies that may expand their options, increase yield and income without compromising sustainable agricultural practices. 
One of the alternative technologies is BT corn, a corn variety improved through modern biotechnology that can inherently protect itself from corn borers. BT corn was principally developed to resist the European corn borer, a major pest in North America and Europe. Seeing its successful adoption in the developed countries, scientists from both public and private sectors in the Philippines saw the potential of the technology. However, further tests had to be undertaken to study the technology's efficacy under local conditions. BT corn was tested in the Philippines in 1996 through a multi-sectoral collaboration between the University of the Philippines Los Baños Institute of Plant Breeding and Pioneer Seeds. The uh, Institute of Plant Breeding you know, is the national center for uh, plant improvement uh, uh, in the Philippines. It is also mandated uh, by law uh, to take the uh, leadership role in the uh, uh, development and use of uh, biotechnology, uh, also for crop improvement to support the breeding of new varieties of various crops, including corn, that uh, Filipi uh, Filipino farmers can, uh, can use. So the Institute of Plant Breeding uh, not only has its own uh, uh, breeding programs for, for corn, uh, it also works with other partners uh, who develop uh, uh, agricultural technologies. The National Committee on Biosafety of the Philippines, or the NCBP, approved the first contained greenhouse trial of BT corn. Event Mon 810 in August 1996. NCBP regulates research and development of biotechnology in the Philippines. The committee was involved from the start, from the time that the uh, proponent uh, requested that seeds be imported into the country for purposes of experiment up to that time that there were multiple uh, releases for, for field testing. The, the, the seeds were tested in, in the greenhouse, in the laboratory, when that was successful and uh, the, the, the proponent submitted another application, this time for limited field testing, which is for uh, one plot of land the size of a basketball court. And we looked at the, uh, we looked at the biosafety issues as well and uh, before, before approving that particular proposal. In 1998, a planned limited field release trial was initiated collaboratively with the Institute of Plant Breeding and Pioneer Seeds and the Institute of Plant Breeding and Cargill Seeds, which was later acquired by Monsanto Philippines. Several sectors of society voiced their concerns regarding the technology. One of the major problems that uh, we really encountered uh, during this, uh, even before the uh, conduct of the multi-location trials, are the anti-gene groups. In fact, in, in one instance, we are given almost no chance to give uh, adequate information for uh, these people to be to understand and to be aware of the uh, impact of modern biotechnology. We always state our honest view of uh, biotechnology, emphasizing uh, responsibility and product uh, stewardship uh, efforts uh, through rigorous testing and by a re a regulatory um, safeguards before we commercialize these products. So we provide the media, regulatory agencies and other key stakeholders, the scientific-based um, and uh, information uh, so that, uh, about the technology. I think there were uh, certainly uh, uh, some opinions uh, against the, uh, the technology, but uh, within the academe and within the body of the uh, scientific community uh, in the Philippines, the support had in fact been uh, uh, overwhelming, uh, not just within the University of the Philippines, but also within the uh, organizations like the Academy of Science, National Academy of Science, 
and also the various uh, professional organizations, scientific organizations uh, uh, in the Philippines. Public and private organizations participated in the debate in biotechnology. Because what we wanted to do then was to have a uh, leveling off of the issues. We uh, did invite all the so-called anti-biotech uh, groups, anti-GMO groups, to a lot of meetings, roundtable discussions here and uh, in the other institutions. I think uh, what was key then was to continuously educate everybody uh, through seminars, briefings, and even um, bringing them to the laboratories of our uh, national institutions like ITB. The commercialization of uh, BT corn sparked a lot of debate, particularly from um, people in the en environmental arena. So there was a whole lot of questions about the safety, absolute safety of this uh, genetically modified foods. But the Biotechnology Coalition always put for the safe and responsible use of biotechnology. Eventually, Administrative Order Number 8 was signed on April 2002 by the Department of Agriculture. Administrative Order Number 8 provides that the approval process for propagation of regulated articles is 90 days. The Bureau of Plant Industry, in its first experience in processing a regulated article, application was completed in 90 days. Two independent bodies reviewed results of risk assessment studies submitted by Monsanto. The first commercial planting of BT corn in the Philippines was approved in 2002. Farmers began planting as early as January 2003. In May 2003, a hunger strike was held to press for the moratorium on the commercialization of BT corn. That was an incident that took place here. It did get a lot of media attention. You try to get the emotions to die down and look at everything from an objective, uh, factual basis. Uh, many times decisions are based on emotional or political reasons. I think we have to listen more to the science, objective, factual basis for decisions. The BT corn story in the Philippines, however, does not end with its commercialization. Farmers see initial constraints. Pero ginasabat nila kung ang isa ka diprinsa sa BT, mahalang ang similya. Kagang BT nga maes, maka-income ka gidako. Kaya nga, abono mo lang ang trabaho mo. Tudling. Hindi ka naka-spray, hindi ka nakabakal puradan, hindi ka na kung ano, kundi ang kalaban mo lang damo. Efforts continue to be done by both public and private sectors to address existing and emerging concerns. One of the conditions of the biosafety permit for propagation is that the permittees shall submit monitoring reports on the performance of the crop within the monitoring requirements as specified in the permit. Other safety permit conditions are also amply addressed in the administrative order number eight. The applicant was required to submit its insect resistance management program. ISA uh, continues to work uh, again with uh, both public and private sector organizations uh, in this uh, 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 follow-up uh, socio-economic uh, uh, studies uh, so that we're able to see that uh, really the value of, new, of these new technologies uh, go beyond uh, uh, merely uh, agronomic uh, uh, importance uh, but goes uh, towards uh, uh, improving the quality, uh, quality of life of uh, uh, our people in the rural areas. My single message is to give biotechnology a try without, of course, sacrificing biosafety. The two will have to go hand in hand, the biotechnology and biosafety. But the only way we will know if this will be beneficial to us is for us to try it.
we don't try it, if we close our door to the technology, then we might find ourselves later on, you know, without any access to it, and you know, we might not be able to even regulate it properly. If everybody, meaning all the stakeholders, look at uh, biotechnology from a perspective of national interest, I think there will be more meaningful discussions among the stakeholders because then there will be one common element which will guide the discussion.